Hey guys, MCU Collector here with a new set of videos, and here we have the Hasbro Power Rangers Lightning Collection, the Versus 2 Packs, the In Space Red Ranger versus Astronema, and here we have the Target exclusive Spectrum Series box, which we did not know was coming, but was kind of surprised. Hey, look, these are in store. Guess what, Hasbro? Um, to our fans and collectors, we want to take all of your money and get you to buy a different box. Uh, which, you know, not everyone is going to do, of course, but I'm a completist and uh, I'm a sucker. These shiny boxes, they got me. Um, but on these Versus 2 packs, this design for the packaging looks incredible. So looking at the artwork, we have Astronema facing Andros, the Red Ranger. Um, so it's just insane. So spoiler alert, if you didn't watch Power Rangers in space, stop the video, go watch it, come back to this video, because it is the greatest season of Power Rangers of all times. I said what I said, go ahead and change my mind, you won't. So, looking at the artwork, we have them face to face, but on the standard box, they're just looking straight out, which isn't bad, but the, the face to face concept idea for these two packs, that's incredible, it just looks so much better. And also, it's just a shiny box, it looks so shiny. That sucks because on the side you don't get any kind of side profile, but not that big of a deal, but look, shiny, shiny. But I will actually be opening this regular two pack, I will not be opening the Spectrum series because those ones are gonna stay in box forever or until at least I get fed up and say, you know what, no more damn Spectrum boxes. If Target and Hasbro continue to do it with every single release, I will get mad and I will um, at some point just have to draw a line in the sand and say no more. But we shall see. So, uh, but the packaging looks great. We see In Space Red Ranger Astronema uh, artwork. Artwork looks really good. Here on the back, we have a look at the two figures dueling it out. Here we have the figures loaded with all kinds of accessories, and we have some different head sculpts, which are not good and semi decent. So let's open it up and take a look at them. Okay, and here are the Andros Red Ranger and Astronema two pack figures out of the package. And a couple of uh, good things. The Red Ranger Andros, it's an awesome figure. It's an extremely simplistic design for the Rangers, and I don't even mind that. So the figure is just very well done for what it is because there's not a whole lot going on to it. It just stands out and just really good figure all around that we have gotten from Hasbro. Now, Astronema, there's a couple of things that I don't like, but there are some good things in the little details, so we'll kind of take a closer look. We'll start with Andros, and then we'll move on to Astronema. Okay, so starting with Andros's, Andros's accessories, we have his blaster here, and as you can see, it is the same as the one that we got with the In Space Yellow Ranger. There is no difference to it, and it is painted well. We get some um, gray plastic in there, some blue color, a little bit of gold and red. There actually is some silver paint right in there, but the rest of this part up here is just gray plastic. But that looks really good. Focus back in. So I like that. We get his um, his main weapon, which is his drill sword. And I forget what it was called, um, but this came out looking pretty good. We get a red stripe around there. Um, so, you know, nothing special, but not too bad. It's just gray plastic. It's not like a silver paint or anything like that. But for whatever reason, it doesn't look like that super cheap gray plastic. So I'm I'm okay with that. And then we get a set of interchangeable hands for Andros. So out of the package, you can see he has this pointing finger one. And I don't really recall what that comes through or if that's part of the morphing process or what it was when they say, let's rock it. So I'm not sure. And then we get a fist for his left hand. This is for the right hand. And then out of the package, he has two open holding hands for either the blaster or his uh, sword. And then of course we get the unmasked Andros head which when the promo images were first released, I thought, God, that's a horrible head sculpt. And now having it in hand, I'm thinking, God, it's not a great head sculpt. So it's still not good, but it's definitely not as bad as I thought it would be. Looking at it straight on, there's eh, there's some resemblance. You start to go to like the side angle profile and I could really see it a lot more. Having it in hand, I could see that it was that what they were going for and I could see that it was pretty close so to say that it's terrible right off the bat isn't quite as fair I think you definitely have to have this one in hand to really appreciate it and then we get the blonde painted in there for his hair if anything I think they went a little bit too dark brown for the regular hair uh, but the blonde streaks in there is pretty accurate but there he is 
and looking at the close-up of the figure. Again, it's a very simplistic design, but just looks so damn good. I really like the design of the helmet, as you can see there. Just like with the Ashley in Space Yellow Ranger, it is done nice and clean, unlike the two-pack um, of the SPD and stuff, which has a similar design, which came out looking like crap. We get that little bit of gold paint right in there where the white color meets to, uh, meets on the two sides. So on the SPD one, it, it looks really bad. Uh, but here, it came out looking pretty clean. The squares there, clean. The white paint over the red, for the most part, is clean. Right on the butterfly joint, it gets a little janky right there. As you can see, that is not a nice clean line. But that's really the only problem because there's really no paint anywhere else. We get the yellow on the on the belt there, but that's it. Nothing else going on. Now I know I saw I had seen some comments. Um, people were talking about this color piece, how it is painted yellow, whereas on In Space Yellow Ranger, it's painted gold. The the reason why I think it's done that way is because you can't really do this yellow on the Yellow Ranger. It's just not going to work. So that's why I think they went with a gold um, on the Yellow Ranger and and then yellow for the Red Ranger. The yellow I would say is more accurate to the show. The gold, not so much, but I don't know if that's the real reason, um, but I think that's kind of what's going on with it. So there is Andros, and now let's check out uh, Astronoma. Okay, for Astronoma, let's start with this. She comes a pair, uh, with a pair of interchangeable hands. These are fists because she has open hands out of the package, so we get these two fists. You can see a little molded um, design on the back of the hand, so those look really good. Um, and then we get a couple of other accessories. So there's this weird one that attaches to her leg, um, and this is just an extremely rubbery piece um, done in a, a gray plastic that I that I the gray plastic that I hate. That's you know semi translucent. But we actually get some silver paint going on in there if we could stay focused, um, and then some gold paint going on in there. But there's nothing on the on the. Oh, we actually do get the same paint, uh, silver and gold, on both sides. Uh, forgive me, I'm feeling a little under the weather today, um, so I'm kind of a little off my game. Um, she has her staff here, which has some red and gold paint going on in there, and it's just done in gray plastic. Nothing special going on there, but that came out looking really good. Um, and then this piece that I was telling you about here that attaches to her leg, because as you see that little peg there, so it just pegs on there, and it can kind of move around, but it just kind of sits there and I get that's you know that's kind of how it was in the show it just looks really funny in figure form and then it kind of falls off semi easily so just kind of be aware of that uh, but looking at the astronomer figure when they first showed it and I was thinking the head sculpt wow that's terrible having it in hand I'm looking wow that's not great so just kind of like Andros I can I, I think they hit all the things that they needed to hit but I think the issue with the head sculpt is in the shape of her face I think they went too narrow and tall whereas I think it should have gone a little bit wider not like chubby cheeks not like the the Din Djarin Star Wars Black Series figure um, but if her face was just a little bit wider um, I think it would have made a huge difference and definitely would have res really resembled her uh, from the show Corone. I'm not sure what the actress's name is, but I think that's the issue. But you guys let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts on it are. Um, it's definitely not great, um, but I do see somewhat of a resemblance um, in there. And again, I just think it's because of the shape. But there's some cool things going on here. Like we get some two-tone in the hair. So we got this light blue color that's kind of spray painted look throughout some of it to kind of highlight. So a little bit up here on the top and in the bangs. And on the back of the figure, that's really cool. We get some gold paint. She's got some jewelry things going on in there. So a lot of nice details going on in there. The blush is pretty heavy, but it was very heavy in the show. Um, here we have the locket that she was wearing that Andros, you know, he like cuts off when they're fighting. And then that's how he finds out that she's actually grown his missing sister. Um, so that's a nice little added touch there. Here on these shoulder pads, we actually do get some silver paint going on in there over that cheap gray plastic looking color. Here on these gauntlet pieces, we actually get some silver paint, and those look pretty good. At first, I was thinking these are a little flared out a little too much, but that's pretty accurate to what I had seen in the show, so that's not bad. And then we just have kind of black for the rest of the figure. Uh, but the paint outs are pretty nice on here because we kind of get that fishnet look there. And that's all painted quite nicely. You have no complaints with the silver over the black. It's like two different silver colors. That just looks really nice. We don't get that netting. 
uh, pattern in the back but we get some silver paint but it does look really good so I'm I'm pretty happy with the execution of the figure it's just the face sculpt which just isn't all that great um, and then I forgot she comes with this blast effect piece it's done in a purple color it's pretty large and this is something new so that is actually pretty cool Okay, so for articulation, Astronomer's hair, you know, with most female figures, we, we tend to see this happen, but we're not really getting a whole lot of movement out of that head going on because the hair, the way it's sculpted on there, we're just not, you're not even going to get any side to side motion. So definitely no pivot action going on the shoulder. We can get the shoulder to go up. Ay, 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 ay. That shoulder pad does move with it a little bit because it is rubbery. So you can get the arm to go out that far. You're not really going to get the full rotation because that shoulder pad is going to get in the way, but it is there if you really wanted to work it. You get a nice butterfly joint so you can get the arm to go back pretty far. Forward, not so much because you're actually going to get on this chest plate armor. It's going to really kind of get in the way, but that standard um, butterfly joint that we see with all the female figures is there and it works uh, quite nice. We have a single jointed elbow, so we get a swivel at the elbow and we get only that much bend at the elbow so just about 90 degrees the wrists swivel and they do hinge we have the inverted ab crunch and diaphragm joint so she can tilt to her left that much she can tilt to her right that much which isn't a whole lot but a little bit back hardly anything forward hardly anything but we also have the ab crunch in there so total going forward is that far total going back is insanely far as you can see there, unnaturally so, and then you can actually see where the paint details stop. So that is pretty good. No waist swivel, but we have a swivel at that diaphragm joint, of course. Legs go out that far apart. She can't kick forward that high, but then you can kind of work it out and around like so. You have an upper thigh cut in there. You get a double jointed knee like so. No calf swivel or anything. You have a foot that hinges all the way down. Hinges up, ankle pivot, pickles at the bottom of the feet. She does have a swivel at that ankle piece, kind of like we saw with Ranger Slayer, that separate piece that has the swivel. So she does have that at least. So there is Astronomer's articulation or Corone, if you prefer. Here for Andros, Red Ranger. So the helmet doesn't seem like it's too far down on the neck, but when you kind of look at the side, it kind of think, oh, maybe. So, cause he can only look down that far. He can only look up so much. And I have white paint flaking out and that's not good. Uh, so it is a little low on there. You don't get a whole lot of motion going, uh, but the figure overall just looks really good. You get the side to side, of course, the full swivel. Yeah, nah, not, not a whole lot of pivot going on in there. Shoulder, you can get it to go up that high. Full rotation. Of course, as they try to work it, you get that butterfly joint, which gets the arm to go back that far. You can get it forward a little bit there. You have an upper bicep swivel, which is very hidden between the red paint and the white paint, or the red plastic and the white paint. Uh, you get a double jointed elbow, which gives you more than 90 degrees, like so. Wrists swivel, and they do hinge. Uh, we have the inverted diaphragm joint ab crunch so he can tilt to his left that much he can tilt to his right that much He can go back slightly. He can come forward a little bit, but we also get that lower um, Inverted ab crunch so he can t um, Bend forward that far in total. He can bend back way far in total as well No waist swivel because we have that uh, uh, that diaphragm joint so you get the twist at the diaphragm joint legs go out that far apart he can't kick forward that much but again you can kind of kick it around a little bit we have the upper thigh cut there you get a double jointed knee like so there is the boot swivel right at the top of the boot of course foot hinges down quite a bit you get a little bit of hinge up not a whole lot ankle pivot peg holes at the bottom of the feet so standard articulation for all these rangers because most of them use the same body i think there's only two three uh, for the most part, only three bodies that Hasbro is using for these Rangers. And this one looks to be the same as like the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, uh, which I really, really like. Okay, and to kind of save some time, here are the side-by-side -side comparisons that I will be doing. We have the InSpace Psycho Rangers next to Astronema, next to the InSpace Red Ranger with the yellow space the yellow in space ranger next to andro so in space if you have not watched it, it again like i mentioned earlier is the greatest season of all time um it saved the power rangers franchise it was supposed to be the final season but it performed so well that it continued on and still continues on to this day so to think about 
what In Space really did for the franchise, and it was just an actually awesome show all around. Um, I grew up watching Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and I loved it at the time. I cannot watch it now. I think it's it's done terribly now if you look back and watch it i have a hard time trying to get through the episodes i just didn't enjoy it the way it was all done the way it was written everything about it um but when we got to in space it really turned things around you know the show became serialized with one large over um, arcing story which really made it nice you know that you had the whole andros and his missing sister uh, turned out to be Corone and everything going on there. It's not just this e simple good and evil thing. You know, it's on how astronomer was raised. There was a whole lot going into it. So it was just a very good show all around. So I do highly recommend it if you have not seen it. So I can't wait for Hasbro to complete the In Space Ranger team because, again, it was such a good season. Um, a season in which many call it the final season in the Zordon era. Uh, because, you know, of what happens to Zordon at the end of the season, even though the next season after In Space, which is the um, Lost Galaxy, which is pretty good also, um, had a lot of the same characters. Of course, In Space cameoed in a few different episodes, along with the Psycho Rangers, so some crazy things going on in there. Um, so it's all kind of connected, but such a fantastic season. And because I didn't show it earlier, here's how the Andros head fits on the Red Ranger body, and that looks pretty good. It's definitely a lot higher on the neck than the helmeted uh, head is, but looks pretty good. Okay, so here are my final thoughts on this two-pack. Um, I think it's fantastic. Any Power Rangers fan, I hope that you guys pick up this two-pack uh, because, you know, other figure lines, we don't get as many villains. And even in the Lightning Collection line, not that there's been a whole lot of villains, there's been a fair amount, actually, when we stop and think about it, the Psycho Rangers, um, we got Goldar, we got a couple putties, we got Rita, we got Zed, we're getting monsters, but then a lot of that is Mighty Morphin related, but here we have in space, so we have Astrana, the main villain, ish, right? I don't know if you call Dark Spectre the, the main villain, but Astronema, she was kind of the big driving force behind it all. Um, so it's kind of nice that we're kind of getting that variety um, that previous Power Rangers lines just didn't give, right? So you look at, like, the Bandai Legacy Collection, there were no villains at all. It was, well, I guess they did the In Space Psycho Rangers also. But beyond that, there were no villains. Um, so it's nice that we're really getting a variety. So I'm pretty pleased with this two-pack. The head sculpts aren't great. Could be way better. Um, Astronomous head's tiny compared to Andros now that I really look at it with these two being so close together. Um, Size-wise, Astronomous probably a little undersized. Um, even like Ashley was pretty short compared uh, to Andros. Uh, but In Space is such a good season. I'm going to overlook those things because I'm extremely biased um, because I love that season. Uh, but I am very happy with this two-pack. You guys let me know down in the comments below if you are happy with this two-pack. Did you pick it up? Are you going to pick it up? Are you going for the Spectrum? Are you going to leave the Spectrum in the box? Are you going to open it? Let me know in the comments below. If you guys like this video, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you for watching.